Hey guys, welcome back. So berberine hydrochloride is a natural product that's been used in Chinese medicine in China for the past 3,000 years. Here in the US and throughout the world, Western scientists are so excited about the beneficial health effects linked with berberine that there are over 700 articles published every single year on berberine for improving cardiometabolic health, improving insulin sensitivity, and a new study, I wanna share this with you because it's hot off the press, finds that berberine treats atherosclerosis via a vitamin-like effect down-regulating the choline TMAO production pathway in gut bacteria. So you know that trimethylamine oxide, and this is this, this metabolite that's made by pathogenic gut bacteria, can initiate the process known as atherosclerosis. So because cardiovascular disease is the number one leading cause of mortality in the U.S. and all throughout the world, we have this natural product, berberine, that's been used in China for 3,000 years that has been shown to be effective and actually regress plaque by 3.8% over the course of 16 weeks. So this is really important to talk about. I just want to share exactly what they say. And this was actually published in Nature, uh, one of one of Nature's subjournals known as Signal Transduction and Targeted Therapy Within Nature. So very high impact journal. And these scientists have been studying berberine. This particular research group, I should say, has been studying berberine since 2004, almost 20 years. They say berberine is an active compound isolated from Chinese traditional medicine known as Captitidis rosama and has been used to treat bacterial-caused diarrhea as an over-the-counter drug in China for decades. Since 2004, our group, as well as others, have identified berberine hydrochloride to be safe and effective medicine for hyperlipidemia and type 2 diabetes in clinical practice with mechanisms and mode of action very different from known drugs. So it works similar to metformin, but it also has benefits that metformin does not have by impacting or improving the ecology of the gut microbiome and the gut bacteria. So it does work on AMPK, which is adenosine monophosphate kinase, and that is how metformin works, but it also has a better effect on the gut microbiome and the gut hormones. And they talk about all the different mechanisms. Now, as you can see here in figure six, berberine has been shown to regress carotid artery plaque. And this is actually reducing the, the process known as atherosclerosis. So you can see here in figure A, there was a 3.8% regression in carotid artery plaque plaque. And comparing that to a classically treated using Western allopathic pharmaceuticals, there was actually a 1.9% increase in plaque over the same uh, time period. And so this study had a control group where they were on classically uh, prescribed medications for the for the treatment of heart disease and so forth. Berberine led to a 3.8% reduction in plaque. And the dose that they use is 500 milligrams twice a day. Okay, so, you know, in some of the research studies, they use up to 3,000 milligrams, which I think is a very high dose. You do not need that. And this was a 16-week study. And the scientists say, moreover, 21 patients with atherosclerosis exhibited the average decrease of a plaque score by 3.2% after overall berberine hydrochloride use, 500 milligrams twice a day for four months. Whereas the plaque score in patients treated with ruvastatin plus aspirin or other compounds uh, had an increase in their plaque score by 1.9%. So it's really important to recognize that with these natural compounds, we're not promoting them for the treatment or the cure or prevention of disease. Just talking about supporting metabolic health, but I think this is really interesting to recognize that berberine hydrochloride has this effect on the plaque. Now, the scientists also in this particular study did an animal arm of the study, and they found in mice that the plaque, by the way, was in humans. This wasn't in mice. But in the animal arm of the study, they, they also saw a reversal in this plaque uh, in the carotid arteries. But they found an association with a reduction in this trimethylamine oxide, TMAO, which can be created by eating uh, dietary proteins, sulfur-containing pr products, you know, meats, flesh, uh, eggs, cheese, and so forth, all the so-called bad high-cholesterol foods that, that people like to criticize and so forth. Um, it turns out that, that eating some of those foods can raise TMAO, but we know that fish consumption also raises TMAO. So there's been some confusion. We know that fish is supposedly heart healthy, but red meat is, is bad. Both increase TMAO. Well, it turns out that when you take berberine, berberine can improve the ecology of the microbiome and thereby reducing trimethylamine oxide, TMAO, which might have the, the me mechanistic correlations with the regression of the plaque in the carotid arteries. And so this uh, figure seven does a great job of sort of illustrating possibly 
one mechanism of action of how berberine works. So we're going to continue on and talk more about this. As always, friends, thanks for being here. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for sharing this video directly as a text message. So you know what our sister company, myoscience.com, we have a lot of t-shirts that can inspire healthy living and healthy lifestyle change to create conversations at your local gym, at your local grocery store, if you're on an airplane or you're traveling, the eat like your life depends on it. Also lift like your life depends on it. Amazing t-shirts. We now have women's sizes. We have sleeveless tees that you can wear at the gym and so forth. I'll put links below, friends. Uh, when I travel with these, I always meet new friends, and it's a great way for you to meet like-minded people in your communities and when you travel. So check it out over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. I'll put links below. You can save with the code podcast. Okay, so how is berberine doing all this? And then we're going to get to another clinical study showing that berberine improves metabolic health. Well, they say the mode of action suggests a vitamin-like mechanism where berberine acts on intestinal bacteria. Berberine caused TMAO reduction was seen in these atherosclerotic patients in whom berberine's therapeutic effect against plaque was observed. Thus, it is justified to develop berberine as a medicine for the treatment of atherosclerosis. Again, these are their words, not mine, YouTube or FDA. I mean, it's incredible that we have this natural product that costs maybe a dollar a day at most, and it's it can reverse atherosclerosis in addition to improving reduction in cravings and blood sugar health and so forth. The scientists say in this present study, we show that berberine could reduce levels of TMAO and TMA in the feces and blood, and that's associated with improved blood lipid profiles and significantly decreased in the atherosclerotic index as well as in the high-fat diet-fed hamsters. And they say further investigation revealed that berberine decreased the transformation either from choline to TMA or from choline to TMA to TMAO in the intestinal bacteria, thus reducing TMAO in the blood. And again, TMAO is associated with cardiovascular disease and the process of atherosclerosis. And they conclude that clinical studies show that the average plaque score of 21 atherosclerosis patients decreased by 3.2% over the four-month period where berberine was prescribed orally 500 milligrams twice a day. And I think this is really important to understand and recognize. Furthermore, we're going to talk about this study here, the effect of berberine and fenugreek seed co-supplementation on inflammatory factor lipid and glycemic profiles in patients with type 2 diabetes, a double-blind controlled randomized study. And so what I think is unique about this study, and it correlates with that last study, is they hypothesized that the effect that berberine has is by increasing or upregulating the LDL receptors on the liver. And so we know that that apolipoprotein B from other videos, we've talked about how ApoB can be atherogenic and so forth and causally related with cardiovascular disease. Well, it turns out that one drug that is really popular is the PCSK9 inhibitors. And how do they work? Well, they increase the expression of the LDL receptor on the liver and also probably in other tissues in the body. And it turns out that berberine also has been shown to do that as well. And so that's what this study, I think, is really unique in highlighting the effect of the synergy of different natural compounds. I don't necessarily suggest supplementing with fenugreek. You can readily get it uh, and use it. It's used in Ayurvedic cooking all the time, fenugreek and Indian dishes and so forth. Start to cook with this and use it. Maybe use some fenugreek uh, spices in your dishes and so forth. Have them with meals. And, and if you do decide to supplement with berberine, you could take some of that berberine with the meal and, and use fenugreek. But really good data and really good evidence to suggest that berberine is is a, a factor, a consideration for people who are concerned about supporting cardiovascular and cardiometabolic health. We now have really good evidence in the management of type 2 diabetes and, and blood sugar control, and now we have regression of plaque in the carotid arteries. To me, I think this is exciting, and we're not hearing much about this from pharma or from the media because it's so cheap. Like I said, it's, it's like 30 bucks a month or every 45 days. And so we are only hearing about these very expensive injectable dr drugs and so on that cost 500 to $700 a month. And so we have these really low cost yet effective natural products that have a, a long dossier of use. 3000 years ago was the first time that berberine was written about in traditional Chinese medicine. So a lot of safety data there a lot of use over the years, and uh, there's evidence to suggest that if you want to optimize your cardiometabolic health, you might want to consider supplementing with berberine at dinner time, around meals, uh, especially if you're prone to food cravings and so forth after the fact. So I would love to know what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for hitting the like button. Thank you for sharing, and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.